Today, I will be discussing various parameters in endoscopic ultrasound with a focus on their interpretation and clinical significance. Ultrasound works by emitting high frequency sound waves from a transducer which penetrate the body and reflect off internal structures. These echoes are then captured and converted into real time images. Like light waves that reflect or refract based on refractive index, ultrasound uses high frequency acoustic waves that interact with tissues based on their acoustic impedance, thus producing echoes that are converted into real time images. The degree of reflection of ultrasound waves at tissue interfaces dictates the ecogenicity or brightness of structures on ultrasound image. Let's begin with something fundamental but incredibly powerful that is frequency. In ultrasound, frequency is not just a number, it is a decision, it is a trade off, it decides what we see and what we miss. Frequency refers to the number of sound wave cycles per second measured in megahertz. In endoscopic ultrasound, we typically work with frequencies ranging from 5 megahertz to 20 megahertz. Let's simplify it. Higher frequency means better resolution but shallow depth. Lower frequency means greater depth but less resolution. So, in practical terms, you pick the frequency based on where your target is located. Think of ultrasound frequency like tuning a radio. A high frequency setting gives you crystal clear sound but only from nearby stations. A low frequency setting lets you hear distant stations but with more noise. In endoscopic ultrasound, if you want to image the pancreatic wall clearly, go high. But if you are chasing right celiac artery or deeper structures, go low. For pancreatic cysts, we may use higher frequencies to study wall and septations. For vascular imaging, lower frequencies help us see deeper into the retroperitoneum. Remember this inverse relationship. As frequency increases, resolution increases, depth decreases. As frequency decreases, resolution decreases, but depth increases. Second parameter is gain. We have all adjusted gain while scanning, but do we really understand what it is doing? Gain is more than a brightness knob. It is a powerful tool that can either sharpen our diagnosis or completely distort it. Gain in ultrasound refers to the amplification of the returning echoes. It does not affect the transmission of the sound wave. It only modifies how the received echoes appear on the screen. More gain means brighter image, less gain, darker image. But here is the key. Gain changes perception, not the actual signal. So improper gain settings can create artifacts or hide critical findings. Think about tuning a radio. When the volume is too low, you can barely hear the station, just faint voices. That's like using low gain in ultrasound. Weak echoes don't get amplified and the image looks dark or underexposed. Now, imagine slowly tuning up the volume. The voices become clearer. That is optimal gain. You are amplifying the signals just enough to hear the message. But when the volume is too high, you start hearing everything, not just the station, but background noise also. That is what happens when excessive gain in ultrasound. You are amplifying noise along with meaningful echoes. The image becomes artif artificially bright, grainy and possibly misleading. So setting the right gain is like finding the sweet spot on your radio dial. You want to hear the music clearly, but not the noise. In endoscopic ultrasound, we use different types of gain to fine tune the image. One is overall gain. 
it controls brightness across the entire image. Time gain compensation, it adjusts gain at different time intervals which correspond to different tissue depths. Depth gain compensation adjusts gain at different image depths usually through sliders or touch bars. So, instead of increasing brightness everywhere, you can customize gain at specific depths to correct for signal loss due to attenuation as the wave travels deeper. Time gain compensation works because ultrasound waves attenuate across the tissue. Now, what is blooming effect? Blooming effect refers to an artificial enlargement of overestimation of echogenic structures on ultrasound images due to excessively high gain or inappropriate Doppler signals. It can mislead interpretation by making structures appear larger or more echogenic than they truly are. It occurs when amplification or gain of the returning echo signals is too high. As a result, strong reflectors like calcifications, metal extents or highly vascular areas appear brighter and larger, with signals spillover into the adjacent areas. In Doppler imaging, high gain or low wall filter settings may cause color spill falsely extending vascular signals into nearby non-vascular structures. Legions or echogenic foci may appear larger than their actual dimensions. A blooming calcification might be misread as a parenchymal invasion. Vascularity might be overestimated due to color blooming, especially in tumors or lymph nodes. Now, how to minimize blooming? You have to optimize gain settings. Adjust gain enough to visualize real tissue contrast. Use appropriate dynamic range and contrast to avoid signal saturation. Now the third parameter is depth. Depth is a fundamental imaging parameter in endoscopic ultrasound that determines how far the ultrasound beam penetrates into tissue. Correspondingly, how much of the anatomical field is visualized on the screen. The depth settings controls the field of view. By adjusting depth, the operator chooses whether to focus on superficial structures or visualize deeper anatomical areas. It should be set just beyond the region of interest to ensure optimal resolution without wasting screen space on an unnecessary areas. Now that I would like to discuss is frame rate. It is like capturing real-time clarity. Let's imagine you are playing a fast-paced video game. The action is intense. You need to watch every move, every jump and every enemy to be crystal clear. But suddenly your screen starts to lag. The game freezes, movements become blurry, and you are in trouble. What happened? Your frame rate dropped. Frame rate measured in frames per second is the same concept in endoscopic ultrasound. It is how quickly the machine can display real-time images as you scan. A high frame rate means smooth, continuous movement, ideal when you are tracking a fine needle during an FNA or observing a pulsating vessel. But here is the catch. The more you ask your ultrasound to think by increasing depth, adding focal zooms or zooming in too much, the slower the frame rate becomes. Like a computer trying to do too many things at once, the image starts to lag. And in endoscopic ultrasound, lag can cost you critical precision. So the trick is balance. Use just enough depth, limit focal zones to where they matter most and avoid unnecessary processing features during real-time procedures. Think of it like optimizing your settings before a mission critical level in a game. You want speed and clarity working together. 
Another parameter is acoustic output in an endoscopic ultrasound. Acoustic output refers to the amount of ultrasound energy emitted by the transducer into the patient's tissues during endoscopic ultrasound. It is often measured in terms of acoustic power, watts or mechanical index or thermal index, which indicate potential biological effects. Acoustic output directly affects image brightness and penetration. Higher acoustic output can improve image quality, especially in deep or obese patients, but comes with increased bio-effect risk, especially thermal and mechanical. Lower acoustic output is safer, but may result in poorer image quality. During routine endoscopic ultrasound, acoustic output is generally low and considered safe. In contrast enhanced endoscopic ultrasound or Doppler modes, acoustic output is automatically adjusted and may be temporarily higher. Some machines offer manual control over acoustic output, allowing reduction in sensitive patients, for example in pediatric and pregnant patients. Think of acoustic output like brightness of a flashlight. The more you turn it up, the deeper it penetrates the darkness, but, but it also drains the battery faster. Similarly in endoscopic ultrasound, increasing acoustic output can help you see deeper, but must be used responsibly to avoid overheating the tissue. Always use the Alara principle, as low as reasonably achievable to ensure diagnostic quality while minimizing bio-effects. Another is tissue harmonic imaging. It is an advanced ultrasound technique that improves image quality by utilizing harmonic frequencies generated within tissues. It does not rely solely on the fundamental ultrasound frequency. Let's take a moment to think about a simple prism. When you shine a prism, white light into a prism, it bends and bre breaks that light into its true colors, that's its components, revealing a rainbow that wasn't visible before. Tissue harmonic imaging works in a similar way. When we send a sound wave into the body, we are sending in a clean single frequency signal like white light. But as the sound wave travels deeper into the tissue, it gets distorted. The tissue itself begins to create harmonic frequencies, that is, new waves that are multiples of the original frequency. And here is where the magic happens. Just like the prism reveals the hidden colors in white light, the ultrasound machine is tuned to receive only those harmonic frequencies. These harmonics are cleaner, with less noise and less artifacts, especially near the surface. By listening to the echoes from these harmonics instead of original waves, we get sharper, clearer images like seeing fine details in a rainbow instead of a blurry white flash. It provides sharper and more defined margins, especially for cystus and solid masses. Reduced noise and artifacts, especially helpful in obese patients and those with difficult acoustic windows. It provides better differentiation between hypoechoic and hyperechoic regions. It improves visualization of small structures like bile ducts, pancreas and small lymph nodes. But here is a limitation. Since harmonics are higher frequency, their depth of penetration is lower. This can be a concern in deeper structures. Reduced sensitivity in low signal areas. Tissue harmonic imaging is particularly useful in linear endoscopic ultrasound for delineating small pancreatic masses, bile duct structures, or cystic lesions. That's all for today. See you in the next video.